My name is Barbara Wills and I work in the Department of uh, Conservation, uh, Conservation and Scientific Research at the British Museum. And I've worked here for many years now and over those years I've had an opportunity to specialise. And one of the things, one of the areas that I specialise in have been uh, the care of mummies, animal and human. When the idea for the crocodile exhibition came up, I felt it was a wonderful idea and I was really delighted that the crocodile came my way because it's a rare and wonderful experience to get an opportunity to work on a 12. Find out. I saw the crocodile, I assessed him or her. When I say assess, this means I look at it from the point of view of how stable is it? How resilient is it? What must I do so that it can travel safely to and from CT scanning, it can travel safely to go on display, it can be on display and then go back into storage and beyond because if I'm going to work on it as a conservator I would also want to ensure that it's stable for the next decade, two decades, five decades, ten decades. I'm looking as far ahead as it's possible for me uh, to look ahead and so there's a degree of ongoing care with a crocodile. I note those areas that are unstable, that are cracked, that are possibly going to drop off, dislocate, delaminate, become friable, shatter. All those areas, that's what I'm looking for. And um, I intervene to secure them uh, prior to the CT scan. There are some very straightforward techniques and there are some more complex techniques. But essentially I did the more straightforward techniques with this which was to encapsulate it and bind it in such a way that uh, when it travelled, nothing would fall off. And there were one or two areas where I could see a crack and something was about to come off. And I was able to insert a paste of stable Japanese tissue paper along with a really stable adhesive we use, Clucel-G hydroxypropyl cellulose. You can use this to insert into cracks, to uh, put underneath areas that are delaminating, that are coming apart. And then you carefully weight it in place, it dries, it's going to stay. So that careful packing, along with the museum assistance, enable the crocodile to travel safely for the scan. And not only is dust visually unnecessary and unpleasant, and it obscures the detail, it's also potentially damaging. Quite often the dust is carbon rich, and under high humid conditions, that might actually begin to damage some of the surface. So there's a lot to be said for getting rid of dust, other than the aesthetic. We've got a whole menu of different dust removal techniques, but mine was a museum vacuum cleaner. I could adapt the museum vacuum cleaner to take a plastic pipette that I had modified the end of. So you've got a very, very fine point of suction and that was great because I could get into the nooks and crannies and I could also pick out gently anything that was lost in the nooks and crannies but might have belonged to the surface of the crocodile. So some things I was able to pick out and think, I know where that goes and I could stick it back. This removes a certain amount of dust but because the crocodile has such a wonderful chocolatey, toffee-like, shiny surface and I wanted that to be apparent to the visitors. I was able to lift off the dust using another dry cleaning technique. So essentially it's a piece of soft rubber called groomstick and I roll it over the surface and it picks up the dust and it's a satisfying job to do. And often as I clean I will leave a marker to say this is the bit I want to come back to, here I must secure this. And this is a more subtle technique whereby you get the adhesive flows in and underneath the bitumen surface of the crocodile. And this is quite, it's reasonably sophisticated. You have to flood the area first with white spirits. Then you take your medium for consolidation and with a fine pointed brush, allow it to drop into your crack. And because you flooded it with white spirits, the adhesive flows in, follows the trajectory of the uh, crack. So the white spirits allows it to penetrate those vulnerable areas 
and it, the other job it does is that it stops the adhesive evaporating back up to, the, up to the surface. So it also forms a kind of a barrier layer, so it dries gently and it dries in those areas and sticks together those pieces that you want stuck together. So very pleasing, 30, I think there are about 30 had been on the back, although now you can see maybe seven or eight clone. They themselves were covered with the resin. Certainly there was a point at which uh, blobs of resin were applied and the mummified hatchling was adhered. This was another um, journey of discovery, was to work one's way gently down the back of the crocodile. And as you do, you find the mummified infant crocodiles, some very evident and some not so evident. What you can see is actually the place where they were because you can see it's broken off or there's a fragment of infant crocodile or there's a little bit of reed. And so I was able to count